Welcome to this video on the product rule of exponents, positive exponents only. Let's begin. So the product rule of exponents states that a to the m power times a to the n power is equal to the a to the m plus n power. So we're going to demonstrate this rule using x squared times x to the third. So remember, x squared is the same as x times itself. And we know this because, for example, 2 squared right, is 2 times itself, 3 squared is 3 times itself, so x a variable squared is just x times itself. Likewise, x to the third power is x times x times x. So if we put them all together, we can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's um, multiplied by each other. So we can write that more simply as x to the fifth power. Now you might notice that we could have gotten 5 much more quickly if we had just added 2 and 3, just added the exponents. Okay, so again, if you have 2 um, terms with the same base, different exponents, you can add those exponents together. And that's what the product rule tells us. So let's do another example. So we have a squared times a to the third. So I just want to remind you a good practice in this video is to pause the video when you feel like you've gotten the hang of it and work the example before I work it out for you. And then unpause or even fast forward the video to see if you are correct. So again, we could rewrite a squared as a times a. We could rewrite a to the third as a times a times a we would see that we have five a's. And again, we can do it much more quickly by just adding the two exponents because two plus three is five. So a squared times a to the third power is eight to the fifth power. Okay, next one. Now we have a negative sign here. That's really interesting. So where does that negative sign belong? So in other words, is that negative sign being raised to the third power? Well, the answer is no. In fact, if I wanted to, I could rewrite this as negative 1 times 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4th. That's essentially what we're saying here. So I can just bring the negative 1 through and just focus on the parts that have the same um, base. Right? So we have 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4th. Again, you could rewrite that as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. If you count the number of 2's, you can see that you have 2 to the 7th. But again, we could do this much faster um, and more simply by just adding 3 and 4. So we get negative 1 times 2 to the 7th power. So we have negative 1 times 128 or just negative 128. So that would be our final answer. All right, let's keep going. Now we have 2 times 2 to the 4th. So something you might realize or notice is that this first 2 does not have an exponent. But remember, anytime you have a number or a variable without an exponent, we can put artificially an exponent there. And of course, that exponent is just 1, right? 2 to the first power is just 2, or 2 is 2 to the first power. So once again, we could, if we wanted to, write this out as a multiplication problem, right? And you can see that you have five twos. Or, again, we can actually finally apply the product rule. The product rule says to add those exponents. And 1 plus 4 is 5. Now, if this were a variable, we would be done. However, because it's a number, the expectation is that we can actually evaluate it. So if you type 2 to the 5th power into your calculator or take some time and memorize your power of 2's, you will find that you get 32. So that's our final answer. All right, so now number 4 is something more like what you would actually see um, on a homework or a quiz. So we have 2x to the 3rd power, y to the 5th power, z, times negative 5x, y squared, z to the 3rd power. So the first thing I want to invite you to do is to realize that all of these things, 2, x to the 3rd, y to the 5th, z, and so on, they're all connected through multiplication. In other words, this really means 2 times x to the 3rd times y to the 5th times z times negative 5 times x times y squared times z to the 3rd. Okay? So now that we have that, I want to invite you to remember something else that we've learned, which is that multiplication is commutative. So what does that mean? That means that 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. In other words, when you're performing multiplication, your order does not matter. And that is going to help us because what we can do is we can move these values around so that it makes more sense and so that things with the same base are um, next to each other. So let's start with our numbers. We have a 2 and we have a negative 5. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times negative 5. And you might realize that's just negative 10. OK? 
Okay? So then we're going to move to our x's. We have an x to the third power, and we have an x by itself. So remember that's x to the first power. So then we can apply the product rule here. So 3 plus 1 is 4, so we're going to get x to the fourth power. Okay? So now we have our y's, so we have a y to the fifth power, and we have a y squared. Again, we can apply the product rule of exponents, which tells us to add, right, 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay? Then last but not least, we have our z's. We have a z all by itself, which is really z to the first power, and then we have a z to the third power. So again, we apply that product rule of exponents, right? When we're multiplying things with the same base, we can add their exponents. 1 plus 3 is 4. So I can write my answer as negative 10 x to the 4th, y to the 7th, z to the 4th power. And that's going to be the final answer for this problem. So again, I want to remind you to pause this video, try this problem without me, and then unpause it to see if you were correct. So we have negative 2 to the 6th m times 2 to the 7th m n. So the first thing that might confuse you is that negative sign. So again, there's no parentheses, so I want to invite you to remember that this is really just negative 1 times 2 to the 6th times m times 2 to the 7th times m times n. Okay, so again, I want you to remember that all of these are connected through the operation of multiplication. And like I said, multiplication is commutative. In other words, for example, m times n is the same as n times m. So the order doesn't matter. So the first thing I like to do is to rearrange them so that things with the same base are adjacent or next to each other. And this is going to help me apply my product rule. So the negative one, he could just come down. Then we have 2 to the 6th times 2 to the 7th power. They have the same base, so I can add their exponents. So I have 6 plus 7. 6 plus 7 is 13. Then we have two m's, so remember that's m to the first power times m to the first power. So we're going to add those exponents as well. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then we just have the n. If you'd like, you could write n to the first power. It doesn't matter. Okay? So we have negative 1 times 2 to the 13th times m squared times n or n to the first. So unfortunately, we have to go a little bit further because anytime we have a number, not just a variable, but a number, we have to actually evaluate it. So we have to simplify negative 1 times 2 to the 13th power. So 2 to the 13th power is 8,192. We can multiply that by negative 1, and we just get negative 8,192 m squared n. Okay, and again, remember number, when numbers or letters are touching, there's nothing in between. The implied operation is multiplication. Okay, let's do another example. Again, try to pause this video, work through this on your own, and then unpause it to see if you are correct. So, we have 5 to the third power times x times negative 5 squared times x squared. Okay, so again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move things around. So, I have 5 to the third power times negative 5 squared times x times x squared, okay? And then, remember this negative sign, I know it confuses you guys sometimes, right? So it's really just negative 1. So what I can do, let's rewrite this again. So we have negative 5 squared times 5 to the third times x times x squared, okay? So I want to just rewrite this as negative 1 times 5 to the second power times 5 to the third power times x times x squared, okay? So hopefully, you, can, you followed along, hopefully you can, you're, you're with me still, okay? Um, so the negative one, he's just going to come down with us, right? And then with these other guys, right, we can apply the product rule. So again, the product rule says if I have the same base, we can add our exponents. So 5 to the 2 plus 3 power is 5 to the 5th power. Then with x, right, we're going to have a 1 here, 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, so um, unfortunately, again, we have to simplify this expression right here. So first we have to figure out what is 5 to the 5th power. Okay, so 5 to the 5th power is 3,125. Okay, and then we'll just multiply that by negative 1. So our final answer is 3,125x to the 3rd power. And that's it. 
All right, let's do another example. Again, please pause this video, try this out on your own, and then unpause it to see if you are correct. So we have 2 times m to the fourth times n squared times 2 squared times n times n squared. So let's put a 1 here and a 1 here just to remind ourselves what those exponents are. And then let's go ahead and start rearranging our terms. Okay, so now let's go ahead and apply the product rule. 1 plus 2 is 3, so we have 2 to the third power. 4 plus 2 is 6, so we have m to the sixth power. 2 plus 1 is 3, so we have th uh, n to the third power. Last but not least, we have to evaluate 2 to the third. Well, 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. Sometimes people think it's 6, right? But that would be 2 times 3. It's not 2 times 3, it's 2 to the third power. So 2 times itself 3 times, right? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Okay, so be careful with exponents. Don't confuse it with multiplication. I see it all the time, so just watch that. So our final answer is 8m to the 6n cubed. Okay, so this one's pretty interesting because now we have two negative signs. So I'm going to skip the first step of rewriting it as multiplication, and I'm going to just start rearranging. So we have negative 3 squared times negative 3 to the third power times x squared times x, which is really x to the first power, times y to the fourth times y squared. So let's look at this expression here. So remember what I told you before. This is really negative 1 times 3 squared and then negative 1 times 3 to the third power, right? So that's one way to think about it, one way to approach it. From here, if I wanted to, I could rewrite this as negative 1 times negative 1, right? And then we have 3 squared times 3 to the third power. Well, remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, right? So these literally just go away, they disappear, or if you want, you could just write it as 1. Then we could apply the product rule here. 2 plus 3 is 5, so we're going to have 3 to the fifth power. Okay. Um, just a note, right? You could just start right here and say, oh, wait a minute, a negative times a negative is a positive. So if you'd like to, and if you're okay with it, you could go from here straight to here without all those intermediate steps. That's okay, right? My job is to break it down, to go step by step, to help everybody, to make sure I don't lose anybody. If you can go through these things faster with fewer steps and not make mistakes, then please do that. Okay, so now onto our variables, right? So again, we're applying our product rule. 2 plus 1 is 3, and then 4 plus 2 is 6. So we have x to the third, y to the sixth. Um, bring everything down, so we have 3 to the fifth power, x to the third power, y to the sixth power. Um, and again, this is a positive thing. I, don't, I could write the 1, but I don't really need it. It's not really doing anything for me. So my final answer is 243x to the third, y to the sixth. Again, remember, it's 3 to the fifth power, right? It's not 3 times 5, so be careful with that.